is Harrison Harvey. Harrison is graduating this weekend with a degree in Plan Two Honors and in theater and dance. Born and raised in Houston, Harrison Harvey is an actor and a playwright, finishing his degrees in Plan Two Honors, as I say, and theater and dance. As a performer, his credits at UT include Dead Man's Cell Phone, Dial M for Murder, River City, and Hamlet. Among his professional credits in Austin are The Poison Squad with The Duplicates, Balcony Play at Zach Theater, and currently Church of the Passionate Cat with Underbelly. Harrison recently completed his honors thesis for which he wrote a full-length play. During his time at UT, he spent his summers working for Dell Financial Services. Harrison enjoys science fiction, I'm told, iced coffee, and of course, the company of his dog. He plans to spend this summer at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center in Connecticut, where he has been admitted for playwriting intensive workshop. Harrison, the podium is now yours. Good morning. I'm tremendously honored to have the opportunity to speak before this exceptionally bright and high achieving class. Each of us should feel proud. Gaining admission to Plan 2, let alone graduating Plan 2, is no mean feat. So, first and foremost, congratulations. When Dr. Stoff asked me to speak, I wasn't sure what I'd say. Because what can I tell you that you don't already know? What can I offer having no more wisdom or experience than any of the rest of you? Well, I can give you my perspective. I can reflect, give thanks, and celebrate. Reflect on what the past four years have meant to me and taught me. Give thanks to the people who helped us get here and the people who have helped us through it. And celebrate our achievements past and those to come. I knew Plan 2 was the right program for me when, as a visiting high school senior, I observed the world literature class taught by Marjorie Woods, who would be my own world lit teacher the following year. Seated around the ovular Harkness table in Carruthers 7A, I watched as Dr. Woods led her students in a lively, insightful discussion of Virgil's Aeneid. As always, she invited the visitors to contribute to the class discussion, but I, not having read the Aeneid at this stage of my life, remained silent. I was content to watch and listen, because each of her students spoke so cogently and passionately about the text. I assumed I was in a room full of experts, that each student was a double major in English or classics, but I was delighted and surprised upon speaking to them to learn that I was in more mixed company. Here were students of finance, math, engineering, linguistics, pre-med, discussing Virgil and embodying a maxim I'd heard before and was just now seeing. Plan two students wear many hats. And wear many hats we do. I tend to think that specialization is for ants, that human potential demands we do many things and know many things. Plan two fosters such doing and such knowing. Our curriculum exposes us to a variety of disciplines and a wealth of material, to some of history's greatest artists, thinkers, and oracles, like Homer, Dante, Melville, Proust, Joyce, Wolf, Baldwin, Shakespeare. Philosophy, biology, social science, math, logic, to say nothing of our freshman and junior seminars, and for many, our other majors. We're not always prepared for the material. I'm looking at you, Plan 2 Physics. <laughs> but we do our best. We read, we write a lot, we discover, we synthesize, we make sense, and we help each other. We learn that sometimes, in order to understand something, you need to look at the model differently or find a new model altogether. Nobody denies that it's a lot of work. It is. And like anything, there are highs and lows. There are the peaks, those thrilling moments when your classes all seem to be in conversation with each other. And there are the doldrums, when the work is overwhelming, or when the reading is too dense, or there isn't just enough time in the day, try as we might to alter <laughs> space time. <laughs> it has been a roller coaster of a journey, but I can say with resolute conviction that Plan 2 has shaped me, expanded me, taught me the nobility of learning for the sake of having learned, and imbued me with a reverence for the power of reason and the power of mystery. Reason, the way we make sense of our material world, mystery, promise of something beyond the material, the seed of imagination, which playwright John Guar calls the gift that makes the act of self-examination bearable. When I became a world-lit student my freshman year, 
Dr. Woods introduced us to the heady, evocative world of Sappho, the Greek lyric poet whose work survives today only in fragments. Suffused with yearning, longing, images of purple robes, incense, and saffron, there is something about the sapphic fragments that is both sacred and utterly modern. In the era of music videos, seven-second advertisements, memes, gifts, and instant, often clipped electronic communication, the fragment is a form we know very well. One fragment in particular, like the catchiest hook from a pop song, has stayed with me since I first read it. It goes like this. To be, to reach. My answer to the question, what is Plan 2 like, changes very often. In four years, I never nailed down anything succinct enough to encompass the whole experience. Today, however, as I reflect on my time here, I would say the Plan 2 experience is to be and to reach. To be yourself with your attendant passion, skills, and expertise, and then to reach for more. Of course, we couldn't do any of that without our support systems. I want to thank them now. To the families, thank you for getting us here. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for valuing our education. Thank you for waking us up early to go to school when we were younger. For being there with a reassuring word when life is overwhelming. To the Plan 2 faculty and staff, thank you for four years of sound guidance and Herculean patience. I don't think I'm alone when I say I have sent some pretty panicked late night emails to some of the people in this room, each of which was met by practical advice and some variation on relax, breathe, you'll be okay. Also, thank you for the free printing, and I'm sorry for abusing the privilege. <laughs> to my fellow students, thank you for challenging me and for teaching me. I urge you not to take this community for granted. Take what you've learned and what you've gained and bring it into your vocation, whatever that may be. Use the gifts of mind that you have for good. Identify problems, propose solutions. You are teachers and leaders, every one of you. Finally, celebrate. Be with your loved ones and your friends. Hug them, thank them. Feel proud of what you've accomplished and look forward to the next challenges that come your way. I don't know what the future holds, but I feel certain that this group will have a hand in shaping it. So, please continue to wear your many hats. Continue to honor reason and mystery. Continue to be, continue to reach. Thank you. Each year.